So researchers out at Colorado State University have once again released their annual hurricane forecast for the upcoming season. This is the 40th year that they've done so, and they're predicting a bit of a change this year. So joining me now is Alex DeRosier, who co-authored this report. Alex, tell me more about this year's forecast. Yeah, this year we are forecasting 13 named storms, six of which could become hurricanes, and two of which are forecast to become major hurricanes, which are those high impact storms of category three or higher intensity. Uh, this year's forecast in particular calls for slightly below average Atlantic hurricane season activity when comparing to about 30 years of data. So the question then becomes why fewer storms? Yeah, so there's actually a little bit of push pull this year and, and there's higher uncertainty than you usually get, even though it's hard to predict in April. This is one of those Aprils that's just a little bit harder. And it's because we have two things working against each other. Um, one, the Far eastern and tropical Atlantic regions that we really look to in April, uh, sea surface temperatures there are well are running much warmer than normal. Um, and when you have sea surface temperatures that are warm, hurricanes like to use that as fuel. Warm ocean water is a really important ingredient to making these storms. However, those hurricanes need to exist in the atmosphere that lies above the ocean, and that is dictated more uh, in a really dominant mode by the El Nino that we are expecting to form by peak Atlantic hurricane season. So regardless of those warm ocean temperatures, we are hoping that the El Nino brings more hostile atmospheric conditions and helps to really try and tear those hurricanes apart as they try and form. So that's what led us to only slightly below average because we do need to pay some respect to how warm the Atlantic is. So that is the forecast moving forward, but you guys have years, decades worth of data in the past. So how does this kind of play into or in some ways go against the trend or the bigger picture of what you've seen the last few years when it comes to the number of storms? Yeah, so as far as the last few years, um, we've actually been uh, flipped the switch in a different direction. So in the past few years, especially the last three, we were in a La Nina, which is the opposite of El Nino, and that actually makes the atmosphere above the ocean much more conducive to forming hurricanes. Um, so that's been a big responsible party and driver to the active and high impact hurricane seasons and storms that we've been experiencing. Um, so it's it's rare that you actually get three La Ninas in a row. And now it looks like we're finally switching back in the other direction. As far as the general 30 years of data, this does lie close to average. And ultimately for something to be the average, a few seasons need to come in below. So then that brings us to the final question, which I'm sure the people listening to this probably have by now, and that is, why do we study hurricanes in a landlocked state like Colorado? That is a good question. And one is that everyone should care about hurricanes because they have the potential to be a national disaster. And that can really impact things, even in Colorado, just through changes to uh, infrastructure down in the southeast and other uh, regions that are hurricane prone that can really have large fallout effects to the rest of the country when we experience intense hurricanes like we have in the past few years. Uh, the other is that in general, for weather to be bad, air needs to go up. And right here in Colorado, we have the Rocky Mountains and it's hard for wind to flow straight through them. So it's forced up. And that's a really big trigger mechanism for a lot of the severe weather that we have in the US. And as atmospheric scientists, many of us are somewhat glorified software engineers. So we just write uh, a lot of different computer programs to analyze these large data sets. So it makes sense to put a lot of people in the same place so that we can talk about how these processes relate and do research on wider and varying ranges of problems. The current, the hurricanes may not hit us, but there's at least one part of that atmospheric uh, weather pattern that you can study here. It makes a whole lot of sense. Alex DeRosier from CSU, thank you so much for the time. Thank you.